Yo, welcome. I respectfully disagree podcast. I have no idea what episode this is, man. Y'all excuse me. It's 120 something, 124, 125. I have to look, man. I uh been on vacation for a little bit. Shout out to my brother Kevin. Shout out to Charlie. Oh, just got back from Houston. Shout out to the Eagles. Y'all see the hat? Uh, eight and zero start, best start in franchise history. So shout out to the Eagles. First NFL game. Attended my first NFL game over the weekend, and I also had the luxury of checking out the Houston Astros win the World Series. Not a big baseball guy, but I was there. They won. Dope experience. City turned up. City went crazy. Shout out to Houston. City was on fire. Had a great time. Great time. So, like I said, man, appreciate Chuck, my brother Kevin, man. Uh, it was originally my idea. I was supposed to have been off work anyway because we were supposed to have been going to Vegas. Shout out to my peoples back home. I'm upset about that. I'm mad about that because I really wanted to go back to Vegas. But real life happens. So, it is what it is. I was already off work. And ain't no sense in me using my personal days to sit in the house. So, hey, heading to Houston, going to the game. My brother was like, cool, I'll put in some time off. So we went and done that. I started talking to Charlie. Charlie said he wanted to pull up. So, like I said, first NFL experience, dope experience, great seats, great atmosphere. Eagles 8-0, and Astros won the World Series. Man. But I'll save that for another episode because I actually took my camera with me. I was going to record and do some different things, but never got around to it. Uh, got the Facebook Live going, man. Shout out to y'all watching. Appreciate y'all checking it out. It ain't going to be long. Kyrie Irving. That's what I'm here for today, man. It's like all weekend long, I I was wanting to just, dive in and and say what I wanted to say but like I said I was out of town really couldn't approach it the way that I wanted to and sit down and actually speak um shout out to a friend of mine from back home we was you know constantly texting going back and forth and once I started sensing where the conversation might go I had to pull back on it so I was just like you know what at this point, we're not going to agree on it, so just leave it alone. Like I said, I, I respect that person's opinion. We've always had, you know, deep conversations and things like that, so it was never nothing personal. So if you're listening to this episode or you watch this live, please understand where I was coming from, and I'm going to try to elaborate on that as I continue to talk. Um, So the Kyrie Irving thing dates back to maybe what – at the end of October or whatever, um, he shared a link or screenshot of the the movie poster, trailer, whatever. It was an advertisement for a movie. No caption, no anything, to my knowledge. And if I'm wrong, please, someone educate me. So... He was asked about his post after a, a Brooklyn Nets game. And in my opinion, he done an amazing job elaborating on how he came across it, why he felt the need to share it. And he put emphasis on he's not here to discriminate against anybody. He's not here to do any of these things. He said, I'm a man of the people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in my opinion, he gave a clear, clear breakdown of how all of that transpired. As a reporter, I get it. That's their job. They were just digging, trying to pull. They were just trying to pull something out of him. And that's where I commend him for kind of standing on his position because it's like, man, come on, man. We all know this game. We all know this game. And it's like, they're only going to pull 
certain sound bites. So you have to go back and pull up the full interview to get a better understanding as to how that whole conversation came about. So it's like one reporter asked a question in reference to his post. And that's when he gave this explanation. So then the next reporter followed up with all these silly questions, which kind of got Kyrie, you know, kind of in a mood or whatever. But even still, I still feel like he handled it in a correct manner till finally he was like, you know what? I know where this is going to go. If you're just trying to look for another viral moment or whatever, then find it somewhere else. He, he got up and left. So at that point, I'm like, okay, you know, I didn't think nothing else about it. <laughs> Nobody knew anything about this movie or what it was. Kept it moving. So then the next night or the next day, they follow it up with even more questions. And now all of a sudden, that's when it, it starts gaining momentum. And everybody's like, you know what I'm saying? Kyrie Irving is against Jews and Kyrie Irving's against this. And I'm like, how did y'all get to that from him sharing a post? And that's where I was like, wait a minute. So before I go any deeper, it's like, I understand. Even as somebody that has a podcast, my podcast is open to the public. Anybody can listen to it. So if I sit down and create a bunch of content where people can come on here and just spew a whole bunch of negativity or uninformed statements and things like that, and you're attacking different people, then guess who's responsible for that? Me. My job can hold me accountable for the things that I get on my podcast and say. I'm aware of that. So that's why I try to control what I put out there or the topics that we discuss but I've never once told anybody, no, you can't say that. Or no, we got to start over. I'm taking that out. Every episode that I've ever recorded has been 100%. What you see is what you get. So I'm saying to myself, people are like, Kyrie Irving is a professional athlete. He has to be mindful of what he puts on his platform and things like that. And I'm like, he never once said anything that attacked or targeted any group of people. And I'm like, okay, what is this movie about then? You know what I'm saying? So that's when I'm like, all right, let me, let me look at this because maybe it's something that I'm missing. And again, I didn't watch the movie. I don't care to watch the movie. It ain't nothing that I'm interested in anyway. But when you read the description and you start looking at it, and it's like Kyrie Irving has been on this spiritual journey for quite some time now where, you know, he's he's soul searching and trying to find peace within himself. And he's entitled to that. So even if he does think different than others or have beliefs that don't coincide with everybody else, he's entitled to that. So we're attacking this man for researching whatever it is that he believes in and his ancestry and heritage and things like that. So if he stumbles across something that aligns with his current interests and he found it informative to what he believes in and he hit the share button for those that may think like he does, then how are we making him apologize for that? That's where I was angry. Like I was pissed. Excuse my language. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I word this correctly and, you know, me and E and several others were talking about having this conversation. But I was like, no, nah, let me have it by myself first so that I'm going to get my views out on the table. And again, I can control what is said and not said on my podcast. That way, there's no confusion. So I'm sitting there, I'm like. And then I saw where people start comparing it to Kanye and what Kanye was doing. And that's where I'm going to hit the button. I disagree. Because I feel like the Kanye situation is completely different. Kanye went on a rampage and he was just going around spewing and saying any and everything. If you rock with Kanye, cool. That's your business. That's neither here nor there. But he said some things that some may 
find offensive. So I understand where all of his backlash and all that chaos came from. But then when you start trying to put him in the same box, put Kyrie in the same box as Kanye, I'm like, how? When he never said anything, he just made a post. And it's like, I'm telling my homie from back home, hold on. You can't be a free thinker under the thumb of the NBA or media platforms. And that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm like, again, I'm not here to align with, with either Kyrie or Kanye, but I do respect the fact that their beliefs are their beliefs. Who are we to force somebody to apologize for something that they may not align with? And again, I feel like Kyrie did a, amazing job at giving the specifics for why he shared the post at that point in my opinion there was no other explanation that was needed like and that's why I want to talk about it because in my in my text messages with my friend from back home I was trying to beat around the bush a little bit but it was like, why is it that every other group or every other whatever, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to make sure I don't put my own foot in my mouth. But it's like, everybody else is protected but us. That's truly how I feel. Like, the older I get, the more I'm, I'm realizing that it's like, we have to be mindful of what we say. So we don't offend so many groups of people and so many different things. We have to bite our tongue. But as it relates to making sure we're not exposed to hate speech, hate crimes, make sure our beliefs and things are protected. Who's there fighting these battles for us? Who's losing their endorsements for things that they say about African-Americans and, and their beliefs and things like that? True story, like literally just this past week or weekend, a lady at UK's camp on UK's campus, intoxicated, drunk, tries to come into the dormitory and a black young girl is working the desk. And uh, obviously you could tell that she's drunk or whatever. And the lady's like, um, you OK? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And it's proceeded to be met with the N word being physically attacked and everything else. Of course, the young lady was uh, arrested. I saw where she lost her job at Dillard's or whatnot. And then finally, after it started making this rounds on the internet, UK had to make an official statement, but it's like, what, what, what is that a research? What is that to look into? If we're on this whole kick of no hate speech and all this, that there's zero tolerance. She needs to be kicked off campus immediately. Like, what is there to what is there to look into? Like, this is the precedent that y'all are trying to set by making a mockery and making an, an example out of Kyrie Irving. That's why I was like, I was real deal in my feelings because I'm sitting there like, what are y'all making him a pot? Like, you're gonna force him to apologize for something that he believes in. Now again. I'm not familiar with the movie. I don't know nothing about what he was looking at and why he was looking at it, nor do I, I don't care. But if those are his beliefs and the movie is based on the premise that I believe that African-Americans are the true descendants of Abraham and all that in reference to, uh, I believe somebody correct me. If you listen to this, uh, black Israelites and things of that nature, African-Americans are, are the true first people of the world and blah, blah, blah. If that's the path that life has taken him down and he wants to believe that, then just like any other religion or any other beliefs that people have, he's entitled to that. Shout out to Lewis. We have to do the fighting and we don't. I'm at the, I'm at to get some clarification on that as I'm, as I'm sitting there talking. Like I said, I know I've been rambling for a minute, so I don't know what part you was commenting on. Um, but it's like, and I was trying to explain again to my, my partner back home. It's like, why is it that we hold these athletes to such a standard to where they're supposed to be the spokesperson for the whole entire universe? He was like, 
Kyrie Irving has 17 million followers. He has to be mindful of what he posts on his platform. And I'm like, that's his personal page. I have a choice whether or not I want to follow Kyrie Irving. And if he's posting things that don't align with my beliefs or I feel like, you know what, I don't want to keep seeing whatever he's posting, then guess what? Hit the unfollow button. It's really that simple. At least I thought, at least my opinion. And I'm like, why do people not understand that? Like, athletes are human beings. Musicians are human beings. Their beliefs don't have to fall in line with everything that I believe in for me to respect him or her as a person. And I'm sitting there like, y'all really trying to make this man apologize for something and he explained how and why he done it. Regardless of whether it falls in line with what you believe or whatever group is offended. And he literally said, there were no intentions on, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't hate anybody. And the proof is in his actions. That's why I've been sharing and posting. I'm like, bro, this man done donated to all different groups of people, indigenous people. He's got stuff going on in Africa where he's, you know, putting up water systems and things like that. And I'm sitting there like, how does all that go swept under the rug? And now all of a sudden, Kyrie Irving hates a certain group of people. How did we get here? And I'm like, just off of one post? Nothing that he said. Just a po a picture. That's how I looked at that. It's like, it's a picture. And I'm, I'm like, you know what? I was just dumbfounded. I was like, you know what? Go ahead. Enjoy your trip. I'm at the game. And we sitting at dinner and stuff. And like I said, man, my thumbs was on fire. I'm going back and forth having this conversation. And then, of course, you see Shaq. You see Barkley. You see all of these dudes. And I don't even, I don't agree with that. Because I'm sitting there like, Shaq is on TV calling this man an idiot. Barkley on TV calling this man an idiot. I hear Shannon Sharp. I hear all these people. And it's like, these are shows that I enjoy watching. And again, I'm I'm not to the point where I was like, no, nah, I'm not listening to them no more. I'm not looking at it, blah, blah, blah. It's neither here nor there because, again, your opinion is your opinion. Your beliefs are your beliefs. Long as, as you don't physically harm or attack me, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm not going to judge you as a person based off of however you truly feel. You were talking about how other races are protected. They're protected by their people but we can't stop hating and killing our own. Oh man, that's a whole nother conversation too, because I wanted to do an episode and talk about the whole takeoff situation and how all of that transpired. And like I said, it's, it's been a lot that's been going on, but I just, I wanted to take a break from the mic. I knew I was going on a trip and I was like, I don't even want to get started. So you, you absolutely right. Cause I had everything lined up in regards to that as well, but, but you're right. And if you even look at the Kyrie Irving situation, Jared, it's like there's a divide. There's a huge divide. And it's like everybody's like all the NBA players should take up for Kyrie and LeBron's throwing them under the bus and this and that. And then you got some people that's like, I believe everything. You know, I'm going to stand with Kyrie, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it never should have got to this point, in my opinion. And I understand the powers that be. And based off of how this country is right now, it's like you can't be yourself and speak on certain things and be true to yourself without putting everything at risk. Even now, this podcast, me talking, it's like you have to be mindful of what you say because you, you're, you're going to jeopardize it all. And then uh, shout out coach because me and him kind of went back and forth because he was like, they're trying to blackball Kyrie and put him out the league like Kaepernick and things like that. And even with that, it's like, I still, I, disagree. I feel like the situations are not similar. Like we're trying to group all of this into one. And I'm saying to myself, we all know Kaepernick was blackballed. They want all these people to jump into Kyrie's situation, but won't talk 
to the police if they see somebody get killed. Amen. Amen. And now I, I swear, like, I, we, we're going to discuss it, man. I'm, I'm going to set up a whole nother episode for that as well. But it was just like, bro, like, I really couldn't wait to get home to talk about this. But um, I'm saying that they're trying to make an example out of Kyrie Irving, in my opinion. Kyrie Irving thinks outside the box. So if Kyrie Irving has any kind of uh, influence on the masses and quote unquote, the woke people, then they're trying to silence (laughs) and make sure other people don't start thinking like him. And that's where I was like, maybe it's, it's a, it's a bigger, it's a bigger meaning behind all the things that's going on with Kyrie Irving, other than trying to place him as somebody that's, uh, anti semantic or whatever the word is. I, I can't, I could never pronounce it in no way. Um, but I was telling coach, I was like, bro, like they're trying to force him to apologize for his beliefs. Like that ain't, that ain't cool, bro. And I kept saying, I was like, man, Kyrie Irving is a global icon. Like, I can't see them forcing him out of the league, but I also know that he's a man of principle. So if he's, if he truly believes that it's like, you really trying to force this man to go against his beliefs as a man to save a paycheck. And I'm like, in my opinion, my opinion, bro, like I want to emphasize that this is just my opinion. They're trying to make this a situation where you put him out here on public display. If you agree with anything that this man says, then guess what? We're going to strip you piece by piece of everything. We're going to make you apologize. We're going to make you get on your hands and knees and apologize. If you want this money, if you want back in the league, like, I woke up one day, I forgot what day it was, either Friday or Saturday, and they said that uh, Kyrie Irving and the NBA had donated X amount of money. I think Kyrie put up half a million dollars. And then I woke up yesterday and saw where they rejected the payment. They, They didn't want it. But then the team gives him a list of demands, and then on this list of demands, it's like, you got to donate $500,000 to this and you got to go meet with this people and go meet with that people and training on this and training on that. And I'm like, so he's got to buy himself back into his job. What is this? Where are we going with this? It makes zero sense. Shout out E. What's up, man? They want him to kiss the convert. Like, bro, like, like real shit. It's like, those are his beliefs. He never once said anything against anybody. And the million dollar question is, bro, when I saw that this movie was created in 2018, if it was so offensive as everybody is saying, again, I haven't watched it. I just read the description of what it's about. If this movie is has such a dangerous rhetoric, why is it still available for people to watch? I literally went to Amazon this morning. It's still up there. Even after all this, it's still up there. So if the movie's on Amazon, why is Bezos not under fire for allowing this to be viewed? Like, how is it still up? How was it that somebody was to get a, was able to get a budget and put the film together if it was so controversial and offensive to all these different whatever? Again, I'm, I'm not going into depth on that because I'm not here to discuss one person's beliefs versus somebody else's. Like, I'm not here for that. That's not my it's not my fight. I'm simply saying why and how did Kyrie Irving become the spokesperson? for a film that doesn't belong to him. (laughs) He didn't create it. He didn't put money behind it. 
He has nothing to do with it other than he sat down and watched it and hit the share button. Like, we do that every day. Sit down and scroll and watch Netflix and see something that, you know what, I'm bored. This sounds like a good movie. I'm going to sit down and watch it. Damn, y'all, I man, y'all should go check this out. I found it to be interesting. Me, personally. If you want to sit down and watch it, then sit down and watch it. If you're like, nah, hell nah, ain't nothing I want to look at, then keep it moving. In my opinion, that's all that man done was I was researching my heritage, researching my beliefs. He said something about his name means something and whatever, I don't know. He started breaking down what his name truly means and things like that in, re in relation to his heritage. So he Google searched different things that relates to some of those meanings. And that's how he stumbled across this movie. So if he was sitting around pushing some anti rhetoric, then you would constantly see things like that from him. But if you look at his Instagram, he does post a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Pro black this, or, uh, I don't want to use the word woke because it's like, I, I really don't know what that means either. It's like, those are his beliefs, man. Like period. And because it, comes off as outside of the box or it doesn't fall in line with the norm. Everybody's here to attack this man and put this label on him and throw him in a box. And what I wanted to talk about the most was something that was said between me and my friend from back home. We're sitting here texting and I didn't watch the Lakers game that night. Like I said, I'm in Houston, bro. I'm on vacation. And Apparently, LeBron had said something that was like, you know, Kyrie Irving hurt a lot of people and I don't condone that. I don't stand with that or whatever LeBron said. Again, I didn't see it that night. I didn't watch the game. But I woke up that next morning and it was like, well, your guy LeBron didn't like what Kyrie Irving said. So now how do you feel? And. That's what pissed me off the most because I'm like, that's the evidence in my opinion that it's like, so because I'm a LeBron fan and I wear LeBron stuff or wear LeBron shoes, I'm supposed to fall in line with everything that LeBron says or does. Fuck no. Excuse my language. I don't care what LeBron said. That That's not going to change my opinion on how I feel about this situation and why they're trying to make a man apologize for something that he believes in. I don't give a damn what LeBron said. And if you look at it now, LeBron catching all kinds of hell because it's like, bro, I get it. He's the face of the league. Everybody's looking for LeBron to say something about everything. Even the whole takeoff stuff last night, like, bro, just take your ass out there and hoop. Now I'm sounding like the shut up and dribble, but like no disrespect to LeBron, man. You you do what you want to do, but it's like at some point in time, bro, like, man, don't might want to hear you every time. That's just my opinion. Like what reason does LeBron have to speak on Kyrie Irving and they on a completely opposite coast? Kevin Durant, that's different. This is now a distraction in the locker room. This is now a situation where every reporter is asking everybody on the team about this situation. And even then, Kevin Durant was like, look, the team should have left it quiet. The team should have left it alone. Let us just go out here and hoop. But then they even made him go back and try to clarify it and backtrack. And it's like, at some point in time, you don't have a leg to stand on. It's like if I side with my teammate, then I'm putting everything at risk. So then if I do go against the grain and side with them, now you're a sellout. And it's like at the end of the day, my job is to provide and protect for my family and my household. Now, 
I support my friends. I got this whole support the homies, T-shirts, hoodies, everything else. But common sense is going to say there has to be a, a stopping point somewhere. I'm not going to put my livelihood on the line for your beliefs, especially if me and you ain't on the same page in regards to those, uh, to those beliefs anyway. Like I'm supposed to put my family at risk and lose all my endorsements and how I earn my money just so I can please the masses so they can get on Instagram and Facebook and everything else to tweet. Oh, KD's a real one. LeBron's a sellout. KD's a real one. Like, man, F that. Like at some point in time, we have to use common sense. And that's where I feel like LeBron inserting himself into that situation, regardless of the questions that was asked, Hey, bro, that ain't got nothing to do with me. In my opinion, would have sufficed. But then you put yourself in position to be uh, scrutinized because now it's like, oh, well, he must feel the way Kyrie felt because he wouldn't address the question. You're 100% correct with everything you said. But like, And it ain't even about me trying to sound right, bro. It's just like that's, again, this is just me venting. It just so happens that I have a podcast and I'm able to put my words on a mic because I was like, man, y'all should see the text messages, bro. Like we was paragraphs, paragraphs, man, for three days, two days straight. I'm in Houston, Texas, man. Like we at the dinner table, like I ain't even eat my food no more. Cause like, I'm really trying to explain myself and I'm trying to paint this picture. So I'm using all these different analogies and I'm like, maybe it will click, but for whatever reason, it just, it wouldn't click. And then once it turned into, well, what if a white person would have done this about slavery and this? And then I'm like, bro, I've been seeing this shit my whole life. (laughs) Like, what do you mean? What if like we're constantly reminded of our history and how we got here And we're constantly put in situations where we're forced to accept hateful words and people talking crazy to us and looking crazy to us. But there's no group of people that's coming to our defense to say, this is not going to be tolerated. And if we see it, we're going to strip you of everything. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your endorsements. You're going to lose everything for coming at African-Americans. And that's why I'm on this mic, bro. It's like, how do you not see that? To this day, that's why I don't I don't watch movies about slavery. I don't watch none of that. I don't want to see that. I don't care for that. And a lot of people may be like, nah, bro, you wrong. You should always want to know about your history, your your ancestors and where you come from. Like, nah, bro. Like, why do I want to sit around and watch people be dehumanized? Treated like they're nothing. Got the worst of the worst, the worst food, the worst living conditions, the worst everything. Why do I want to sit down and paint those images into my brain? We already got to sit down and and learn about it in school. I hate it that time of the year, bro. But we got to go through it. But that's what I'm saying. Like now that I'm an adult, it's like it's right here in front of our face for us to see every fucking day. Who's going to bat for us is my question. And I'm hoping that you listen to this and you watch this because at the end of the day, bro, there's, it's no offense. Me and you are good for childhood friends. But if you go back and look at some of the things that you were saying to me, bro, like, and I get it, you can't get roused up in no text messages because you got to give people the opportunity to speak and elaborate. And that's what this whole purpose of this episode is it's like maybe if you hear me you'll understand what i'm trying to say like who's going to bat for us don't give me no scenario where it's like well what if a white person done it and it was about black people how would you feel then we've always had examples of that (laughs) we've always had examples of that And the best example, again, like I said, is what just happened in UK 48 or 72 hours ago. And it took public outcry for UK to make a statement. And I went to school there, bro. So I know what the fuck goes on that campus. 
I, I've seen it. It dates all the way back to when Obama was getting ready to go in for president and they was hanging dolls of Obama on campus out of trees, bro. That's 2008. We in 22. So miss me with that. What if we see that shit all the time, but it ain't never been no, this is what's going to happen if you get caught doing it, which is why it continues to happen. And that's been my view on it all this time. Sorry that I'm yelling. Sorry that I'm cussing, but it's like I'm getting roused up again. And then the icing on the cake was, well, LeBron came out and spoke against it. So now what? And it's like, okay, so here goes the, the token black guy that if he, if he doesn't align with it, then the rest of us should. No, bro, that ain't how that work. And like I said, I hope, I hope now you'll 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 understand where I'm coming from. And everybody's like, well, Nike this and Nike that. And I'm like, y'all do realize that just a year ago, Nike already said that their relationship with Kyrie Irving was in question when he threw the the latest shoe under the bus. He was talking about how he didn't have nothing to do with the design and this and that. So that was a broken relationship already. In my opinion, this was the perfect opportunity for Nike to use this as a the official reason to cut ties. We don't condone any hate speech. We're 100% against hate speech. And I'm like, how can it be classified as hate speech? If he never said nothing like that's the part I'm missing. And after this, I'm going to jump off here. Like I try to explain to my peoples back home. I'm a Christian. I believe in Christianity. So if I'm sitting up late at night and I watch a documentary about atheists, and there's certain parts in this movie where it's like, damn, man, it's got my head. I'm like, damn. Hmm. And if I tell somebody, like, hey, man, you should go watch this documentary I just watched, man. It's on atheists. And it's certain parts in there that kind of make me ponder. And I hit the share button. Now I'm an atheist. Now all the Christians should be offended by my posts. And I should lose my job. I should lose everything I got. Because I sat down and watched a documentary about atheists. Like, where does that make sense at? Where does that make sense? If I sit down and watch a documentary on, uh, what's the word for uh, dudes who have more than one wife? Poly, whatever. So if I'm sitting around watching movies and films about men that love having more than one wife, am I disrespecting my marriage? Is that me telling my wife that I want another wife simply because I watched a movie? Like, is this where we, is this where we going at in society to where it's like everything I do, I have to do it in silence. Like I thought, the internet and social media was the perfect platform to educate folks. But I have to be the person to distinguish whether or not that's informative. Everything Kyrie Irving posts ain't meant for me. Everything LeBron James posts ain't meant for me. Like when did we lose the value in, determining things for ourselves. Like the smartest person in the class, I'm just go, supposed to go copy their homework and assume that because they're the smartest one in the room, that their answers is going to be right. Can't think for myself. Just assume that the smartest person in the room, because he or she got straight A's. So what happens if they didn't study for that particular test? And guess what? We both failed because I wouldn't copy somebody who I assumed was right. And that's why I'm like, bro, like there's no way these athletes 
should have all this responsibility of educating the world and supposed to be a role model for all the little kids in the world. Bro, if you don't raise your own damn kids and allow them to think for themselves, there's no way I'm turning on the TV and telling my son every day, hey, bro, look what LeBron said. <laughs> you should go do everything LeBron said because LeBron said it. LeBron is a billionaire, so obviously whatever he's saying has to be correct. Fuck out of here, man. Like, stop it. He's a superstar, so he has a, responsib a responsibility. To His job is to play basketball, bro. It just so happens that he sells sneakers while he does it. Like, nah, man. We, we, we give these celebrities too much influence. And when the game starts breaking down, talking about their social medias and everything, you're like, you're, we're not even critiquing the game. They had just played a game. Hey, man, why you miss that three or why you miss X amount of free throws? We're talking about social media, bro. All the way to the point to where this man done lost. He get ready to lose everything, bro, because they, they legit trying to make an example out of him. And when you got all these rules and stipulations before you can even step back on the court, and it's like even with him doing all of that, the Nets gave him a checklist of all the stuff he got to do. So what happens to that one person that's sitting at home and says, you know what, that ain't enough? We going to continue to boycott the Brooklyn Nets because we feel that ain't enough. Now what? You give him another homework assignment. Tell him he's got to go do something. He got to go jump through all these other hoops to please the masses. And I'm going to leave with this. It's like, bro, like what the hell are people doing to please us? And I ain't with that uh, pro black and this and that. Like it's just right or wrong for me, bro. I don't care what color you are, white, black, orange, green, and shit. Kyrie Irving said that in his, in his press game the first night. Right is right, wrong is wrong, in my opinion, bro. Like, if all these different groups of people have all these people fighting for their rights and acceptance and everything else, where, when is it our turn, bro? Like, when is that? And this ain't about being insensitive to, to other groups of people or things like that. But it's like, shit, our, our people went through slavery and shit, too. To the point to where we still got to get called the N-word and harass simply because that young lady was doing her job as a night desk worker. I swear I saw today on LEX 18's Facebook page, somebody was saying that the black girl violated the white girl's rights when she put her hands on her. And I'm like, what? What? So I can be called the N-word, be kicked, chick bitter several times. Somebody can bite me while calling me the N-word and kicking me. But when I try to restrain them and prevent them from going into the elevator to go upstairs, I violated their rights. The whole world is, I ain't going to say the whole world. There's a lot of people, black and white, that was like, she needs to be kicked off campus. They're glad she was arrested. But then there's still those people that's like, what happened to freedom of speech? I swear on my kids, I read that this morning. Words didn't hurt her. She has to learn to ignore. Like, what do you mean ignore that? We're crucifying it. You know what? Take that word back. I don't even want to use that word as it as it relates to this Kyrie Irving situation. We're tearing Kyrie Irving apart for sharing a picture, a post. But y'all are going to say words didn't hurt this young black woman when she was simply doing her job. Like, I, I went to school there. You can't come into the dorms intoxicated. First of all, obviously, you got to be underage because you're drunk. And that's just an assumption. She might be a fifth-year senior, six-year senior. I don't know. She could be Van Wilder. Who knows? But it's like you come in stumbling, can't even push the button to get on the elevator. At this point, it's her job to say, wait a minute, I got to make sure you're safe. You all right, da, 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 da. And you're met with in bombs. 
but yet somehow, some way, she's at fault still. But y'all going to tell me Kyrie Irving should be more mindful of who he offends. And all he did was share a post for those that may or may not think like he does. Nothing that he said was offensive because he didn't say anything. He shared a post. But because it didn't align with your beliefs, you're angry and you're going to punish him and you're going to take everything away from him, bro. Like, like, nah, man, that's, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. And like I said, man, it's hopefully, <laughs> hopefully more people will understand my stance on it. And I won't have to sit there and go back and forth and argue. And like I said, at the end of the day, it's all opinionated. Like somebody saw his post formed an opinion of what they thought it meant and stamped this label on this man. And even after he clarified it and explained why he done it, you didn't rip that label off. You kept it on and put another one on top of that. Why can't people understand that, bro? Like you, you put a label on this person that wasn't warranted in my opinion. How did we get to he's, he's against Jewish people simply because he watched this film that's been around since 2018 and has been viewed by whoever else in the world. But because Kyrie Irving watched it, now it's a no-no. Their movie been around for five years, four years, and it's like, it ain't until now that we got to put an end to it. Even though it's still up to be watched. I can go rent it right now for $4.99. Like, come on, man. <laughs> why ain't, why ain't uh, Amazon being boycotted? Huh? Until the movie's taken off Amazon's platform, why are people still going to Amazon Prime? So until somebody can provide me with those answers, kiss my ass as it pertains to Kyrie Irving, because at the end of the day, I feel like it's not justified. Like you're, you're putting words in that man's mouth, even though he explained how he came across it, even though he gave an apology. Granted it was after the suspension, but it's like he, he finally apologized, but even that ain't good enough. So why are we still here a week later? Like, (laughs) <laughs> like I said, it, it's so much that I want to say, but I, I'm not going to say it because it's going to open up a whole nother can of worms. And like I said, it's like at this point in time, the internet is dangerous. Social media is dangerous. And these podcasts is dangerous. Cause it's like now, man, you, you can't even sit down and just have an open hot mic without the fear. Of like, you know what, man, somebody going to listen to this and then shit. <laughs> what five listeners I do have, they going to cancel me. <laughs> Anyways, man, appreciate y'all listening to me vent rant. If y'all want to continue this conversation, man, hit me up. I'm, I'm, I will be more than glad to hear your thoughts. Shout out to my peoples from back home. If you listen to this man, reach out. If you want to do an episode, that's fine. If not pick up the phone and call. Cause I almost done it. I almost called you. Cause I was like, man, I'm, I'm in Texas. I'm enjoying myself. The Astros have won the World Series. My Eagles is 8-0. And I'm like, I'm sitting here arguing about Kyrie Irving. Like, man, nah, man. Nah. So even if you don't want to get on the on the episode, bro, pick up the phone, man. Let, let's talk about it. I would, I would love to have an open conversation about it. It ain't even a debate because my beliefs don't fall in line with Kyrie's beliefs. So get that out the way. I'm not here to defend him. I'm not defending Kyrie Irving. I'm defending his rights to post whatever he wants on his social media platform. If what he posted did not involve causing harm to others. And what I mean by that is if he didn't say, go watch this, let's take to the streets. This is our real history blah, 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 blah. Then we can't put him in the box for those that have done that. Because you remember when COVID first started, Chinese people were under attack. They were being blamed for the coronavirus. 
all over this country. Crime rates, hate crimes and everything else skyrocketed. When nobody banned for, for putting out that rhetoric. Matter of fact, they supposed to be announcing that they running for president again. He wasn't banned. He didn't lose everything. People didn't condemn him. They cheered for him. They clapped for him. All the way to the point to where now he has the opportunity to run for president again. So I'm going to ask you, and I'm done for real. We protect everybody else. Who going to protect us, bro? When are we going to feel comfortable to where we can say what we want to say and do what we want to say without the risk of losing our Nike deals, our million dollar contracts, everything that we've built from the ground up. When can we speak and not have the fear of losing everything? Oh, LeBron, he, he's a sellout. He's a this, he's a that. Man, get out of here, bro. Y'all tripping. Y'all tripping. Anyways, man, appreciate y'all listening. Appreciate those that's, that's on the live that's been sitting here this time, all this time. Uh, Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the comments, man. Talk to me, man. I'm tired of posting these videos, and I feel like ain't nobody looking at them. Ain't nobody listening to the podcast. No nothing, man. Let's let's figure out a way to interact, man. All right. Peace out. Appreciate y'all, man. We out. Ass toasted. No competition. I'm Nisha Coastal. I feel so high. I feel so live. My body's in the twine. I'm Nisha Coastal. I feel so live. And I know why. That I can't deny. I'm Nisha Coastal. Giddy fine wine. Fools mock liquor. Wish me I'm high class.